New Year and welcome to 2x2. Two two. Today for the service we are running a repeat service or a rerun from March 22, 2020. So instead of focusing on the message from that sermon, I thought we would take some time to look at the liturgical year or the church calendar year. Seeing as we just started a new year ourselves, I thought it would be fitting to talk about how the church tells time and how the church calculates what a year looks like. The church's year is Christological, which means it tells the time by celebrating the events of Jesus' birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension, as well as the gift of the Holy Spirit. So while some of us tell time using days, hours, seconds, even months, the church uses uh, parts of Jesus' life to tell time. So there is the season of Advent, the purple here, and the season of Christmas and Epiphany, and those make up the Christmas cycle. Then there's the Easter cycle of Lent, Easter, and Pentecost. So that's the Easter cycle. Both of these cycles are divided by periods of ordinary time. So the Easter cycle is the oldest of the two church cycles between Christmas and Easter. It's composed of Lent, Easter, and Pentecost. It is rooted in the Jewish feasts of Passover and Pentecost, and it's based on the lunar calendar, which refers to the moon cycle. So the day of Easter falls on the Sunday after the first full moon on or after March 21. So that's pretty technical of where Easter falls, but that's why Easter is not on the same day every year because the moon cycles kind of shift and move year after year. Then there's the Christmas cycle, composed of Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany. The Christmas cycle is based on the solar calendar, and so, which is the sun. And so Christmas always falls on December 25. Advent begins four weeks prior to that. That's why we have the Four Candles of Advent, which we talked a lot about in our online children's ministry videos this past Advent season. And then Epiphany is 12 days after Christmas on the January 6th. So Epiphany is on January 6th, Christmas is on December 25th, Advent is four weeks before that. And that's always the same. It's always that way because it's based on the solar calendar rather than the lunar one. And then there's these times of ordinary time in between where we can take some time to reflect on each of those seasons. Now I want to dive just a little bit deeper into each of these sections. And I also want you to take notice of the colors as we go around the circle and see how they match one another, how they have similar meanings along the way, and how we're walking around the circle and we do it year after year after year. Advent. We just had Advent. And it's the season of waiting for the coming of the Messiah. We await the birth of Christ. And it's a time of learning how to be patient, of anticipating something, just as the early people did when they were anticipating this promised Messiah. Even though we know Jesus did come, we still reflect and wait, similar to how they did. Christmas is when we celebrate the Incarnation, which means the coming of Jesus down to earth as a human being. And we celebrate his life here on earth, and that ends in the culmination on Epiphany on January 6th, which is when we celebrate the manifestation of God through Jesus Christ, a light to the whole world. Those are just a lot of fancy words of saying we talk about how Jesus came down to the earth to proclaim about the kingdom of God. And we see a lot of those stories throughout the New Testament. Then we move through ordinary time and we reflect on different stories, uh, reflect on Jesus' ministry until we hit the point of Lent. Oops, sorry. Lent is a time of conversion, baptism, renewal, and discipleship. It's a time when we all are on our way to Jerusalem, and Jesus shows us the way of preparing to share in his death and resurrection, and as his body, of continuing his ministry. So Lent is a time where we pause, and we reflect, and we anticipate Christ's death, which comes during Holy Week, which is the culmination at the end of Lent. And oftentimes people give something up during Lent or they add a spiritual discipline to their life as an extra form of reflecting during that time of the church season. 
Then we hit Easter. Easter is the joyful celebration of the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. And so we talk about how Christ has risen. We talk about the hope that that gives to all of us and to the world. Then there's Pentecost, which is a fairly short season, and it's a time where we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit to the church. And the Holy Spirit empowers all of us. It empowers you, it empowers me, it empowers other staff members here at church, it empowers other people in the world to live and engage in the ministry and mission of Christ here on earth, to bring God's kingdom here and now. And so after Pentecost, we enter into another period of ordinary time where we reflect more on our actions and roles and the life we live in the world today. So that's a quick run through of the liturgical year. I hope now that you have a little bit more background about it, you can appreciate each of the seasons a little bit more. And the reason that it's cyclical and the reason that we keep coming around to it is because all of the things that the liturgical year teaches us, all of the different periods of time, are important for us as humans to continue to reflect upon year after year. Because things change in our lives. We change as people. Uh, but God is faithful and steadfast, and the life of Jesus Christ remains faithful and true. And so we continue to learn about it year after year, reflect on it, uh, and grow through it. To close it, I'd like to close us in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ. Thank you that we are currently in the season of Christmas where we celebrate his incarnation, him coming down to be a human being here on earth. Lord, as the world continues to spin around us, as things happen that make us feel unsettled, nervous, or scared, we just pray that your peace can transcend, that your uh, wisdom can come upon our leaders and us as individuals. And Lord, please empower us with your Holy Spirit to live wholeheartedly for you in this week. In your name I pray, amen. See you later.